Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Refresh Point. My name is Ben, and as always, I'm joined by my constant co-host, current Y Schwartz English World Champion, Steve. Steve, how's it going? Uh, pretty good. Um, slow week. Uh, you know, once once the competitive season starts coming around, my my week, I, it's hard to concentrate during the week. Yeah. You know? yeah. I, I I'm ready to just. It's, and we're headed into the holiday season like in a couple months i'm ready to dispense with all the work and get to some weishwartz <laughs> absolutely uh i'm already there yeah. uh and i've just returned from sacramento a uh, scrub it's okay. that's okay that's okay it's all right um we, we're gonna talk about that and much more and as is on brand for us we are recording this on the day of and specifically before a Bush Road Fall news conference. Woo! Yeah. We could never have these recorded at a good time. It never works. It never Our works. Our life is more important than Bushy Road. And we'll always have another podcast afterwards. It's okay. Yeah. We can comment on whatever nonsense they talk about later. It's all good. Like, we have the time. Uh, congratulations to, uh, I, I don't know, Rurouni Kenshin, Uma Musume, and something something sisters fans. I it think better was, be Al Buddha. That's the, all the, I'm saying. Uh, this, I think that was like the speculation. Congratulations to all of you. Congratulations, Steve. Slime was the, I only had one, one list in the top 16 at Sacramento, and it won the whole event. I know. Um, so maybe they'll ban it. No. For you. No. Smile. No. Um, we've both been continuing on our JP I've Play lost journeys. I've all hope in this at this point. <laughs> we, we've both been continuing on our JP Play journeys uh, with one more qualifier in our immediate area before the last chance being available. Uh, and that qualifier is two days after this episode goes out. So cool. And of course, we have the BCS Sacramento top 16 to go over, like we just mentioned. So shovel your decks, tap or cut. And we'll get right into the refresh point with some breaking news. Da, 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 da. Yeah, a conference is happening. Yeah. Anyways, uh, and JoJo's released. Yeah. Woo! Actually, a really fun set. I think. Actually, a really fun set. A really cool set uh, yeah. to mess around with now. There's like, there's a lot of potential with this set now, with both the premium booster and the golden win cards to kind of mess around a little bit because there's um there's like a lot of modern good things now right available for the set yeah modern good you know utilities modern good deck speed deck speed massive you know we have on death Akatsuki. we have just pay one sack check four we have pay one clock yourself check six and add two characters you know like and a number of reliable deck speed combos that come at level one the pants one being the most notable um <clears throat> what's this is going to be the new awful as fuck set to face in a tournament. Like if you run into like, a deal like, player, oh my god, dude. Like th this set, this set, trait removal? Yeah. Name removal? Yeah, but -6000 power. That's a little hard. Yes, that one, yeah. yeah. For my finisher sends cards to the clock and you just lose the game? Kill my, yourself now. Yeah, my finisher does one what one damage like seven times if I get the right thing to happen? Uh, that one's actually extremely easy. So, this is going to be the official new most awful thing to face in a tournament Swiss, where you're going to be like, whatever this deck does, I'm going to hate it. That's just that's just how it is. I, I've been fucking around with that, that Dio finisher. Other people have been too. And yeah. man, what it, whatever setup that you can find to get to it. And there's a few different ones at this point, honestly. And look, I... It's it it's never been so satisfying to fulfill your finisher requirement. You just like you hit one vanilla swing and you're like, great, you're dead. You're dead in two attack resolves. Awesome. Die. Die now. You're at three three. Die. Perish. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things oh, where man. It, it probably isn't tournament winning. But it's certainly local winning and it's pretty it's a good locals deck and honestly it's it's good enough what i will say if any other tournament is similar to how sacramento was and that there's so many there's just so many 
players playing different things that yeah. like the top tier decks are just not represented. Like there were like maybe five Saiyan players in that room. There's like maybe two or three Overlord players in that room. Yeah, I think that those two decks in particular are kind of being, uh, Overlord was never followed. And the, uh, and Slime I think is experiencing a bit of a down curve because a lot of the popular content creators and um, people talking about Weishwartz um, have been low selling that deck for, for a hot minute. Sure, yeah. So, um, I, I think also just like the releases that have been coming out. Yeah, we're also getting a lot of popular releases. Are, are, yeah, they, they appeal to people. Like Bochi the Rock, good enough. A, good yeah, set. we got a fat. Also able alive. to kill, able to kill slime anyways, yeah. not for nothing. We got a big fat Hall Live premium booster yep. with a bunch of big girls in, in, in bikinis. Summer so, booster, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The VTubers were out in fucking force, dude. Yeah. Like, like, you, you want, like, I fought, like, four Hall Live players throughout, like, the 4 3 15 run. to 20% of every event just get we used actually, to it. No, no, no. We have, we have the stats, I think, actually. I think it's just the top stats. The Bushi Road started putting out some, some top stats on their website. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of every event. It's that's just the nature of the nature of the beast. It has several good decks that all can win the eight door deck and the um, eight standby deck and door choice and many other combinations will work. Uh, various Kanata combinations, various uh mume combinations Ushia, japan yeah. is trying all kinds of shit now uh, we are too as yeah. it turns out everybody so, is so um everybody's having a great time i saw a kali kanada coming out of japan um kali kanada yeah ah. just like no finisher whatsoever just sending it <laughs> there's a lot of hollow life there there's a lot of sds there yeah there's even a bunch of oshinoko there because people like oshinoko you know people were waiting on that yeah, it didn't perform super duper well from what it looks like, but um, it, it, again, like it's one of those Weiss is one of those games where you're just gonna see decks that are really popular more than you're gonna see decks that are really strong. Yeah. Uh, and so, moving on. Uh, yeah. Oh, Marvel also, released. before we go any further, before we go too much further away from Sacramento, um, shout out to one of our longest standing. Su supporters and locals for getting into top eight congratulations Woo! good work you'll get them next time as it turns out if you listen to the refresh point you might be a good player <laughs> yeah most yeah. feared thing dark horse decks second most feared thing a real one at an event look out yeah yeah look out look out yeah congratulations to andrew for getting top eight uh good rep good rep good shot good shot we'll get him next time get him next time all good uh the rest of us there from dallas kind of scrubbed out but you know it's uh it's a long season it's a long season it's all right it's all right we'll get there on one one homie had like the absolute tragic run where it's just like Buy, win three, lose three. Ugh. Yeah, you hate to see Ugh. that. <laughs> That's absolutely disgusting. That's, uh, that was a rough one. That's a roughie. That's a rough, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, heart, hearts out to everybody. There's a lot of good Kali players that were kind of falling in the trenches, too. Uh, Steven, who beat you, I believe. Uh, at the Sacramento 2K playing Kelly Gura. He, uh, I was at like X2 at some point and he's sitting right next to me in the X2 tables. And then I'm like, how'd it go? He was like, I'm X3. I'm like, that's rough. <laughs> I will say though, what they a, got a bunch uh, of people drowning, drowning. They got three of the top four local. Yeah, yeah, so true, true. Good for them. Yeah, it's good that's stuff. That's how you defend it. True, true. That's fair enough. Uh, Marvel release. For, you know, people that I, I think it's like there it's like two or three of you in Singapore that listen to this per the Spotify location statistics. You you can play Marvel! And you should go to that demo caravan so you can get the memory counter from Spider-Man. That memory counter was a Spider-Man No Way Home promo in Japan. So maybe this one will be slightly easier to get your hands on. 
Uh, no, it sure won't. Uh, if you have any desire to play this set casually, just here in the States or, or anywhere else where English Weiss is played, just forget that card even exists. I, I'm guessing that that promo will be uh, challenging to acquire. So hopefully you weren't thinking you needed a memory counter. Anyway, uh, yeah, it yeah. would be really cool if these demo caravans were done more often. I think they do a lot to boost engagement. Um, I think that we saw you, you see whenever you see investment in the space, that's done the right way, that's interacting at the store level with new players. I think that type of engagement is really driving. And it, I think it would do Bushiro a lot of good if they examine the results from this thing and apply it to high density population areas of other countries. Um, with English exclusives or something like this, I think you could really drive a lot of, a lot of eyeballs to the game. Yeah, absolutely. So, I think it's time. We don't have that much going. Actually, you know what? Before we go into the spike corner, quick stop to the mailbox. We love your comments. Keep commenting on all of our stuff. Steven actually left a Spotify comment, but it was removed later. So, um, if you're listening on Spotify, I guess that really sucks. I don't, uh, I don't understand what happened with that, but... Um, if you want to engage with us, technically, yeah, you can go on to YouTube and just comment on the video later. Uh, or you can tweet at us, or you can, uh, I don't know, message us on Discord. Like, we're pretty, we're pretty publicly out there in, like, Weiss, like, Discord. We're in most of the Weiss spaces. Ben is in even more than me, but... We're in a few different But we're not Weiss trying to courts. hide ourselves. We're around, we're around. We're around. You want to ask us things? Around the way. Yeah. Tell, tell us things like the homie that uh, Discord DM'd me reminding, re telling us that they were a real one. Yeah, I got you. All good. Um, so, yeah. Shout outs to Lindsay, who stopped by uh, for a little bit to play some Weiss with us, get some burgers. Yeah, I was hang good. Hang out and chill. Yeah. Turns out, fun. Rodeo Goat is real cool. Um, yeah, if you're ever in the DFW area and you don't know where or how or want to play some Weiss and want to hang out with us, um, yeah, please contact us. We love hosting out-of-towners. We love exposing you to our super dangerous and highly competitive locals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, shout out just now recently to Manny underscore 916 who beat the Choice Pants Review Starlight player foreshadowing in the top 16. Uh, and shout outs as always to Vegeta93021, who was with us in uh, Sacramento playing Overlord. Shout outs to Psychotic Sh Sashimi S uh, for commenting about, you know, the ban list that definitely won't happen. But see you somewhere. Uh, again, I am going to all of the United States regionals. So if you're going to a BCS this year and you're not one of our European or Southeast Asian listeners, then yes, I will see you there. You'll have a chance to fight Ben. I mean, it's it, he'll have his gloves on at every event. So, yeah, as it turns out, and again, we're foreshadowing, but man, like Revue felt really close. Yeah. And I was it just was like, really close, unironically. I was just like, damn. Not you, but like another one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> True. Uh, and so in any case, uh, shout outs to Kokoren, uh, the Adventure Time player from Georgia area. He asked when he's coming on the podcast. You know, we are super choosy with our guests. <laughs> so far, every single one of our guests has either been a world champion. <laughs> Or a world second place. <laughs> hey, hey, he got top eight at Worlds with Adventure Time. Yeah, I'm aware. <laughs> you ain't got to tell me. <laughs> I was there. That's true. I'm that's certain we played during Swiss. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's I was true. like, what the fuck? I don't even know what this set does. That's, that's, that's see, that true. this is the stuff that fosters my fears <laughs> yeah, in tournament yeah, play. Yeah. You're playing what and how? Anyway... 
Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. We will uh we will definitely discuss it. It's not a no. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. And then that's it for the mailbox for now. Keep commenting. Give us your comments. We love comments. Even if we don't mention it on the air, we'll almost always give you a little heart, give you a little response. We read and reply to as many as possible. If there's even a remote reason to reply, we do it. We read them all 100% of them. We probably thank do. thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much for the comments. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, except for if we miss you for whatever like unknown reason, that was probably a mistake. We do... Try to read every single comment and respond to every single comment. So yeah, good stuff. Let's hop into the spike corner. I cannot wait to get into the spike corner. Before I have me, many, many... let's talk about the, the winners. Yeah. Before we talk about the scrubs, let's talk about the winners. All right. As it turns out, slime's still good. Yep. Wahoo. Apparently it's not news to anyone else. Certainly not me, but uh, yeah. A pants slime, your Sacramento champion. Looks like three rules plus some stuff. Or well, three rules was not it? three rules. I didn't, um, the I didn't the zero our Lord strategy, the Lord strategy meeting. Yeah, it's it's eight pants yeah, with the yeah. zero combo. Eight pants, zero combo. All the usual suspects. There is nothing, nothing, really unique here. There it's is. Just oh, there is. Okay, I'm ready. There's no dragonoid. Yeah. There's no claw kicker. Nah. There's no checker. It's the worst of their finishers. <laughs> He has no. He has one copy of Shion. Really, really well executed deck, played well, and yes, it's mostly a Benny Maru on the top end. We yeah. love the casino, dude. But boy, I love high rolling. But boy, howdy, is this the zero game from hell? Like he literally has every zero that's even remotely useful in the entire set. Again, he's playing the casino. He has so many zeros. It's <laughs> it's not even just the quantity of zeros. It's like one of seven of them yeah and then we've got the old man we've got the td rimaru we've got drop search we've got is this the climax swap that There's a checks clim two yeah we've got uh one veldora we've got two on death kotski yeah, we've got one three of everything yeah, three one of, of everything. the other ricky like effects I, so, I understand that it's it's not a Ricky. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a bunch it's of the bottom. There's a bunch of cards on the bottom end of this thing. Um, potions, too. Potions, potions yeah. Rimuru, of course. Just like sending it. Yeah. yeah, I think Potions Rimuru is is solid for, for the 8-pants deck. So, yeah. This this looks like a lot of other 8-pants builds that have been built before. It's just a good deck played well. That, Easy as you like. I'm going to tell you, that'll win a lot of tournaments. <laughs> so, you build a good deck and play it well, you're going to win a lot of tournaments. It's fair enough. I feel really justified by our number two deck here. I sold, Ayakashi, this, I sold this deck hard whenever I saw it. I was yeah. like, man, this deck looks so good. And I was not wrong, apparently. As it turns out, next soul, lots of burns, good enough board. Yeah. The only thing that's cringe about playing Ayakashi right now is this pay one, ditch two, search two on attack card is a box topper promo oh. and by god that thing oh. is gonna be not cheap <laughs> oh i did not realize that yeah Ew, that is it's gross, gross. yeah okay <laughs> maybe the best level one standby combo um in, in a while in terms of just raw utility and advantage wait this this one that like top stocks is hilarious oh yeah no it's crazy good what what card is this the that's brainstormer. their brainstormer. The brainstormer if drives. If the brainstormer's in my clock, I can Fumio you at level two, and, and or my level. I have a level one that's a consistent seven k that stocks level winner hires on attack. This brainstorm is the card that drives the entire set. All of their mechanics are built around it, and it's such a good card because it has a it secondary swaps, on yeah. play effect that makes running four good. You, it doesn't even run four. It just runs three. No, because he's missing the other cards that synergize with it. The level one and level three blue combos uh, work with this card. Oh, sure, the sure. Er yeah. like the early, it's the yeah, early yeah, play yeah. condition for the healer. Yeah, and yeah. So, like, there's a lot of pieces and parts that work with this card. And this deck is just the 1-0 the that does the stock charging. But, uh, and the Fumio. But, um. <laughs> it, gives, just, it gives plus one soul to the, to the JC. 
<laughs> yeah. One of JC gets plus one soul and power for brainstorm and clock. Man, I man, this is hilarious. Uh, yeah, man. I think that Jeez. I think Ayakashi is incredibly spicy, and um, the top end of this thing is real dangerous. So you have to be a bit cautious when dealing with them. Their finishing combo is strange. It's a, it's on a support. Uh, a, a support, I'll put support in quotes. It's on a 3-2 with 10,000 power that gives 1,500 to all. And it, on combo, or while it's in the climax area, all of your other, th this, of this 3-2 Matsuri get uh, the ability to, at the Encore step, pay two and ditch one to burn two. That's like an aura style effect that stacks. And it will stack with ones that happen to enter play during the turn. Yeah. So if you only have one of this thing and then you hit a standby trigger and now you have two of this thing, now all of your Matsuris basically have two of this effect stacked on top of them. Which is fairly expensive, not for nothing, but- Correct. But it is Encore Step, which means we get to build three extra stock before we pay for it. And uh, the other thing is the Matsuri is a healer. So we get to heal down if, and then it, maybe, or we've, however many we stand by it at two, because there is another, another realistic good standby target. And so because you get to stand by either of these targets at two, and then you can stand by the back row target at three, there's a lot of free money kicking around. And you can see that he's running the stock charger on top of it. Yeah, so yeah for sure. There's a lot of money here. And if they get to throw their entire wallet at you, you can real easy die. Yeah, it's kind of, it's interesting in that uh, lots of other finishers will throw either a lot of the small packets up front or kind of weave it in between attacks. Whereas this one is like, you hit with all the attacks first, which are generally because you're swinging with threes or you're, even though it's a standby, you're, you're able to trigger a lot. Yeah, you'll you'll generally be swinging a lot with like these threes or fours or even direct lanes, so maybe even three, four, or five, even potentially. Yeah. Um, or actually, no, it'd be uh, one, two. No, it'd be four because four you're at the climax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, three, threes and fours early, which are you know regarded as easier to block, and then afterwards you can pay the cost for a lot of burn twos at the end. But that also gives you a little flexibility in that, like, let's say you get triple blocked, right? Now you just, maybe you just don't pay for a lot of burn twos or you right. don't pay for as many of them. Right, and you have some defensive play here. So uh, they have a yellow backup that's pay two and pitch a character on backup to give minus two souls. Um, that could be super annoying at the wrong time, um, particularly with the amount of on cancel finishers that are kicking around in the format right now, um, like the Oshinoko choice finisher, for example. Yeah. Where um, reducing their souls by two dramatically reduces the power of their finisher. Yeah. Um, so that's really powerful. Um, they have their pitch to check. They have a pitch to check four on attack. Yeah. It's and it pitches anything. Yeah. So. Pitch to check four on attack in a standby deck is incredibly useful because you can, and it's a zero, which means you can lead your standby targets with it and then step on it as soon as you hit the right standby trigger and, and move on. So it's it's just a really, and they also, not for nothing, their 2-2 two -two is the old Dow profile where it's like 1100 power and um, check check triggers on attack um so that's yeah. really nice we love we love deciding whether or not to trigger standby right it's a and, great time yeah exactly and if it stays on the board through the turn it can help decide the triggers for your finisher or you can sculpt in more standbys to try and get the support on board anyway there's a lot of good stuff here i really like this deck so absolutely um shout outs to the jacko eno player you know the, the Avis the, the Avis Guilty Gear in you know, cult rises uh, once again uh, as it turns out is a good enough deck yeah I I find it a bit surprising how well it did honestly because I I'm not underselling the deck clearly it's good um Avis is 
won so many games with it. Um, <laughs> and now it has a top four finish. So uh, here in the US, I, I'm uh, this probably won't be the last one. But the thing about this deck that always disturbs me is how when we played against each other, it always felt like the knife's edge was really really sharp on this deck oh yeah where for it's sure. like you have a two card hand and like things really need to go well because things can fall apart super quick uh if your opponent has counterplay so uh i like i like the way it's built here we have really good hedges mm -hmm. all over the deck which is which is nice i think the um I think the Leo clean cut is a is a nice piece for the and, and like I think clean cut is a little underrated in the meta. This but. is basically I think this is unironically I think this is basically just Avis's list, but playing two healers instead of some other like uh, counterplay to like uh, enemy back rows and others. It's a pretty yeah. similar list otherwise I think. Yeah, uh, I yeah I, I agree. I think that jacko combo has always struck me that profile has always felt the wrong way for me but it's the only combo that will work for this sort of setup so yep i mean good stuff yeah really really well good done stuff. um so the third place deck is itsuki yeah uh, a deck we know a deck we love deck a deck that's been love. around for years at this point um almost unchanged um and played by a super cool guy, Isaac, uh, the guy who ran the Sacramento 2K, gets his uh, gets a sweet Worlds invite. Turns out he's apparently good at the game. So pretty good stuff. That's nice. Yeah, this pretty good stuff. Yeah, this build looks super normal. Um, yeah, not 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 trying to reinvent anything. Just a really solid build of the of the Eski finisher, the set two finisher, obviously. Um, a few non Eski cards that are in here so i don't know how i feel about that in general we've got like the there's an anti early for itsuki but he did, he opted for the ichigo one mm -hmm. um not sure why i'm sure it, it, if you listen to this podcast feel free and comment uh, explaining i mean that. it's probably costed differently it's yeah, pitch so. two which is a worse cost in my opinion um, uh, uh, for the type of finisher you're attempting to employ i guess um whereas the other one is pay to and stock isn't really a, typically an issue for itsuki decks because um, you have free stock charging kind of yeah i guess like, that's i guess that's fair i guess that's fair but well, um but yeah on, the, on that same token like discard two is like almost always a cost you're able to pay like sure sure yeah, true. like if we if we don't have an issue with stock we super shouldn't have an issue with hand unless the game is bad right so right right that's uh that's fair so um, uh going down the list of a few of the other normal ish lists that are present we have even two Overlord players, so so you know two of the three, you know <laughs> top top eight, the top sixteen. Woo anybody playing? I, I said it. I feel like I've said it a dozen times in this podcast. Anybody still playing that deck is a dangerous, dangerous player. Like the people who have committed and played this deck the whole time, all ten of them are the most dangerous people to face <laughs> in a turn. Um, lots, lots, of, a few seven deadly sins players, yeah. some other Itsuki players, yeah. Um, what it, uh, or or a other Itsuki player, um, a few a few different varied Hollow Live piles. Yeah, for sure. so we have three different Hollow Live decks, all very very different decks. Um, and uh, also one of the seven deadly players playing, uh, basically like, like almost like a one of of the Guild Thunder combo to like <laughs> patch the mid game in a sense. Yeah, so this is like draw four. Yeah. The check four, add four. Yeah. I've seen this combo before because one of our locals decided to experiment with it. So this is five stock soul, three pants. Yeah. And it's two and of three the- three different color climax. Yeah, it's <laughs> two of the bonder and one of the, the gill thunder, I think, or- It is one of the bonder it's and two one of the, the bonder thunder. and two of the gills. All right, all right. It is, uh, this deck is real spicy. So we're also seeing we're starting to see this hand to stock Elizabeth in small quantities uh, all over the place. Um, I I don't know. It, it whenever I face this stupid deck, it always feels like they have 900 stock. I, I do. Is one more really? Actually, is that yeah. what's holding you back? One Actually, more? yeah, a lot because a lot of the times that the game is going less than good, then you'll be like spending down all of your stock, right? 
because you'll be brainstorming like two or three times every single turn and then like paying for this and that paying for a climax swap every other turn and so y you in like a less than good game you can kind of end up at like a five six seven you know stock state and you're like okay one more stock can get me triple Hen hendrickson right i or guess one I only... more stock can get me to <laughs> One more stock gets me into like double Hendy Fumio, something like that. Yeah, my I guess I I don't know. Maybe I'm yeah. Maybe I'm just facing different people built different. But <laughs> it feels like they never struggle to get this combo. Uh, and brainstorming twice a turn is still stock plus plus two. Where they're like yeah okay uh, I get a free brainstorm I get the regular brainstorm and then maybe I get this other brainstorm if I feel like it and then combo of course because I drew like seven cards this turn and uh, yeah yeah I do that thing again yeah so yeah um but yeah interesting take our three hall live decks are all let's go real. bottom top bottom of the top yep. Chloe Ali Mari. Chloe Ali Mollerine is kind of an older take on the eight door deck. Um, we're seeing less Ali because it's starting to pivot towards um, just running eight door with the stuff from the summer set. And also just more Anya. And more Anya. Yeah. But really more of the um, Koyo the Koyori. Uh, not Koyori. No. It's um, Iroha. Sorry, the, the, yeah, Iroha the Iroha healer. Burns, yeah. The Iroha healer and the um, oh, Rene Sorry, no, it's Rene that burns. Yeah, Rene I, burns. I don't know these fucking VTubers, man. I God know. damn it. That's why I'm helping you out. All right, all right, all right. Um, but yeah, we're we got a real we got a really ambitious build here. It's running the Hollow X event, which uh, lets you search for climaxes in case you need them. Um, Which is funny in an eight door deck where Anya is presumably available as well. Uh, yes, Anya is in there uh, as a. Oh, we have both. Yeah, no, awesome. we're running both. Yeah. Um, and then we've got this Hato that's like a one o two five, and it gets. 5,000 power if it has itself under itself as a marker. And one soul. Yes. And it can put itself under itself as a marker on play. Yeah. So, kind of an interesting card. I don't think I've ever seen it before. Yeah, just hit hit face. Yeah. Hit face. We've got the Resonator um, Louis for additional deck speed and random marker stuff. Um, this deck does look like uh, a lot of the other eight door builds and, and probably struggles with the similar the same sort of similar problems um, a bit weak on deck speed a bit weak um, when things uh, go a little sideways from a trigger perspective but the yeah otherwise very reasonable yeah uh cali marine suisse yeah so this is a cali marine deck with the with a suisse one of in case the game demands it yeah, so, we can just really, really despise Overlord. Yeah, uh, I. This person's been hurt. <laughs> like, there's no other way to explain it. There's no other reason that makes any sense. This person has been hurt. <laughs> they're running two two slayers. Yeah, they're not. Wait, no, just no, no, that's not two slayers. This is uh. This is a helmet. This is a helmet. This is a helmet. They have two of the Anya. Which is a two, which is a slayer at three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, they to, have to two of yeah. the downgrade, double downgrader. <laughs> yep. And 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 also on top of all of that, we have one of the sweet state combo and two of the things that early play it, and one pants, just in case our opponent isn't getting fucked enough, <laughs> we can kick them down a flight of stairs, <laughs> and maybe that will kill them. We even have the Roboco yep. for on reverse. Or no, 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 sorry, no. If this card is standing. Choose when, when uh yeah, it yeah, gives yeah, on yeah, reverse top, top deck. deck. On reverse top deck. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so we have that too. This person has played against a lot of eight standby decks. This person has played against a lot of overlord decks. This person has played against a lot of decks oppressing him on the board, and he's not gonna take it for one more second. <laughs> <laughs> he's got everything to shit on that. It's anti-early. A top deck, discard your whole field, can't back up, downgrade, what? tap counter. Yeah, yeah every we got piece everything, of hatred dude. that could be in a deck is in this one. So fuck them. Fuck them in general, apparently. And I still have twenty-three soul triggers. Yeah. Good stuff. And Good of stuff. course, um, we've got this uh, helmet plus tap to give Oniverse cross turn power. So yep. 
This is a this is a deck. This is a haters. This is a haters deck right here. This man. is a haters deck right there. Yep. We all don't right. like them. We don't like anyone. We <laughs> we hate everyone. All right, all right. Nearing ne nearing the end here. What the fuck, Steve? I don't know. What the fuck? Why can't you play? Why can't you play Okayu Sora Marine? I can't. Bitches man. out here playing Miko Sora. Yeah. This what is, the fuck? This is a deck from like three years ago. <laughs> Um, I why can't you just play, I can only assume, play it again? Yeah, I can only assume this person is the fastest Y Schwartz player on the earth because uh, playing minus souls in a 35 minute timer is really ambitious. So, yeah, but they got it done. You know, they what? Did. congrats. Um, I think that minus souls feels a lot better in context now due to the nature of how many off finishers have been added in the summer set. There's like four of them. So, this guy decided to play none of them. He picked he picked <laughs> no, one, he played the choco. one choco, which is pay three and pitch one to on reverse burn two and then scry the top of your opponent's deck. A totally good, reasonable effect. Of your deck, but yeah. Oh, is it your deck? Yeah. Top oh, or bottom unfortunate. of your deck. Okay. Um, Still good. Like, we love it's trigger fine. checking. It's completely yeah. fine. Yeah. But. Also plays a guy for free from your hand. It does. It's it's the it's the level three summoner. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. He's got a handful of other level three off finishers, pitch two to burn one, the ASCII burn one, the aqua double attacker sometimes. Um so like a handful of of decent off finishing choices. But when I saw this deck, I couldn't help but think about how this 1055 is getting reverses in 2024 but i also okay 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 so hear me out so hear me out so hear me out <laughs> so actually here's the spice i feel like right now a lot of level one boards kind of just suck yeah that's what i was thinking i was like kind of the like let's think about this if you're not playing standby slime right okay or any that stand by anything else or stand by anything else right we don't have like Goblin Slayer kicking around. There's like SDS, but SDS largely will just have two of the 1 0 in front. And those are only six fives anyway. Right. Um, and like if you have like any power for a second, then the Miko can get over. And their third lane is a shitter that you can guaranteed reverse. Yep. And then like Chloe's like a 4K off turn. The only real things you have to worry about are Spy, clearly. You will spy. You will never get over. You can't beat Spy. That's uh, true. But Spy is kind of it feels kind of weak right now. Um, they're they feel lost in the mid game, and uh, that's a huge problem for the set. But um, I'm sure there are other one O's that sit at decent power. It's just five five plus anything from the back row kind of does feel like enough nowadays. So maybe it's fine. I would have played Azki in this slot to hedge against some nonsense and just like played some like the Ina Accelerator or um, or maybe like the 1-0 Miko with um, Clock Encore from the Waiting Room uh, to, to hedge against um, this type of nonsense. But we also have Polka to give power. We have Robico to give power. We have the um, Iris Brainstorm that gives power. We've got the 1-1 one, one, uh, Peko, uh, Usada Pekora that gives power. We've got the 2-1 supports that give power. So we have a lot of random power kicking around here uh, on the bottom end of the deck. So maybe it's good enough. I don't know. My bigger worry is about JC and things like that that can just deny the reverses straight up. But again, what sets are running those now and you know who are they i mean overlord but i mean who else who else i don't know so yeah maybe that's good enough rest of the deck looks very reminiscent of the decks for, of your um yeah minus souls baby minus if you souls thought, if you thought minus souls couldn't get couldn't do well well it can so yeah and just, i think that was you yeah i I, <laughs> I feel like the time limit is the biggest problem but uh, and slime decks which apparently don't exist in california <laughs> except for the one guy who apparently beat the shit out of everybody so there uh, you go. yeah 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 uh some ruby list eight standby and a uh, choice 2x standby yep i think that's a underrated deck that can do very very well in the meta good stuff uh yeah honestly like there's a good there's like enough kind of um this is a nice mix 
there's enough kind of like debate going around amongst all the ruby players of like do i like full standby do i like john choice better than early standby is there enough room for this pura uh like decomp combo etc 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 yeah i think pure is forced but um he doesn't lean into it super deeply it's mostly a john ruby deck and like if it comes up great um but i think john john ruby is definitely the build um, that that's the build that feels the most synergistic to me again relies on reverse but um has a bit more control over it because it can it can send the reverse to different lanes so you can't really screw it over um so yeah i i like that a lot yeah i know we're gonna save some space so let's talk about it let's talk about <laughs> Chainsaw Man. Ha! Yeah! You fucking thought. Baited. You thought, bitch. All what right. the hell? We were, we needed to talk about it. Hemino Power? Who yeah. the fuck? Yeah. It's a top eight. Yeah. What even is this? This deck's wild. What so, the hell? So this is similar to the Mumei style builds that yeah. are being walked around um, in Japan and elsewhere. Uh, this is the power version of it where I pay three. I put a card from my hand into the clock. And oh, you clock yourself too, that's right. Yeah, and instead of reversing, I pay three and clock myself and kill the climax on attack. And also, my clock casts out five or less cards. So if I'm at three, five, I just lose the game instantly. Then on attack, I can stack three cards in the waiting room on top of your deck and then burn four. So how does this ever win? Well, if your opponent's at three, they're fuckered. Unless you're at three, six, in which case you're fuckered. So that's rough. Um, you do have some off finishing uh, from the Icy Tail Chainsaw Man and the um, Popsicle power that's like on trigger check if you reveal Climax Burn 1. But outside of that, this is it. This is the guy. So... Dude, I love... He's playing to the fucking Child Deck event, man. Yeah, he's that running... a gamer. Yeah, he's scrying himself. He's scrying... He's doing work. Um, we also we have, have... Bounce, yeah. Yeah, we have Bounce. We've got Fumio. Um, so we have some decompressive mechanics. It's a Psycho deck. This is a Psycho... <laughs> this is a Psycho deck for Psychos. He's running four of the Sack Brainstorm. Yeah. Like, that... that Aki, Just plus. That Aki is probably getting killed every single game. Just like, plus. And it's for blowing up this Chainsaw Man Zero in case your opponent can't reverse it and is like, or is reversing it constantly and dealing damage to you. So, yeah. This is a psycho deck. Yeah. And Choice Stocksoul, which is the most cursed climax configuration I ever heard of. Stocksoul Choice, but yeah. 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 Only two of his finisher, by the way. Yeah. He only needs one. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> he has the he has the one of of the power that searches for like three cards. You just got you just grab it. Yeah. You just at it. Yeah. Smile. That's good. He'll never he'll never whiff it. What? It's yeah. On reverse salvage, easy, easy as you like. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we have pitch three to search for anyway. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. This deck is insane. Lee good, it got top eight. Insane build. <laughs> Congratulations, man. There's no way your opponent knew what you were doing when you sat down. There's no way. There ain't no way. Oh, man. True, though. True, true, true. These are the decks I fear. These are the decks right here. This shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't even need a reverse, not for nothing. No, it's just on attack. It just works. Yeah. It'll You're just work. You have to clock yourself and pay a fortune and blow up the climax, but... Yeah. It's actually modular in a sense too. Yeah. Because you blow it's, up the climax. Because when you blow up the climax, you remove soul from the board. Yep. So Yeah, we can you get real tricky with it. Oh yeah, you can get yeah. assassinated by one of these things. It's like burn four, hit for three, see you fucking later. Not even hit for three, hit for two. Hit for two. Actually you'll play the event to look at the top three cards of your deck so you know when you want to sack the climax. Two or three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sick. Good stuff. Sick build. Sick build. Awesome stuff. Speaking of sick builds, uh, shout outs to David playing Choice Pants Re Review Starlight. We got to we got to confer a little a little meeting of review players. <laughs> I, can, I can only assume that there's a Discord where you guys just there's not 
You guys should really. The, this is the first time that I was able to speak to him. We've known about this guy. He top aided at Anaheim last year. No, I know, but he I top figured... aided at the Sacramento event because he's in the area. He doesn't leave California because he he works at a he works at the family business. Uh, yeah, Osaka but I figured Yacht. you guys would have like. At some point, collaborated. Maybe, uh, honestly, all maybe. thirty of you should really build a Discord. Forty-two, where you can, where you 42. can, yeah, where you can collaborate and like <laughs> act as one hive mind to produce the best version of this deck. <laughs> Apparently, you're not gonna give up. So, yeah, 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 true. At the very least, be terrifying if you can, if you can do anything else. Choice pants is a good list. I personally don't prefer it, but it is good enough to win. Apparently. We've already known this. He already got top eight. Bro, I love this deck. You know why? Because it plays Karen. The Maya finisher. Bro. And the Maya the finisher. The Maya finisher. <laughs> I, I know. love the Maya finisher. I know. It's good stuff. Super good. Yeah. And this you know, top end looks very familiar. Yeah. It's on. Yeah. It's These a are very all good, the usual suspects. <laughs> it's a very good list. But I think the one thing that I really didn't think about, and he, we were talking about it, and he's just like, yeah, I mean, have you just tried. I think this is this thing it's pretty pretty fine i'm like there ain't no way right so he runs three of a copy of as for us it's a 1-0 blue event that on play check for ad one it's camera because the deck with the nano one combo traditionally does not have that much deck speed the somehow even worse choice the somehow even worse torch okay yeah yeah sick and I was like, there's no way that just playing three copies of a card that says deck speed on them will improve my deck's deck speed, right? <laughs> this can't just work, right? I can't draw, I, 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 I can't add it to my hand in another way by drawing it or on Death Akatsuki. Like, sh surely it doesn't just work, right? Right. But um, then, but what if? Yeah, it's, it's really sick. <laughs> I'm really sad. If I had like been playing this, I would have had so many better refreshes. <laughs> Like I already like I proxied it right after the tournament and ran it into a few of the other uh, gamers that were out of tournament and I was just like, wow, um, man. I'm mad. <laughs> that's I'm trolling. Shit, I, sh I should have been doing this the whole goddamn time. Well, um, yep. what I will say is every review player has one trait and similar. Uh, from all the review decks I've ever looked at, and by God, it's more than I thought it would ever be. <laughs> Every review player does the exact same thing. They cannot, they cannot, I assume it's pathological. Running four of a thing is not possible. <laughs> Dude, this the guy, only this four is the thing I disagree deck, with, for sure. The only four ofs in this whole deck are combos one and combos three. That's it, that's it. Every zero that is even tangentially useful. There's like... One of, three, two of, one two, of, two of, one, one of, two one, one, of, one, 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 three, two, one, two, 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 one. He's running two of the thing that sends the level three to memory and then two of the memory healer. Like, how, how does it ever come together? The magic, I don't get it. Hey, the combo just salvages any card on attack. We'll yeah, just add the piece you want. We have to add the thing that makes the deck work. We don't have time to add like random cards that might be useful at some point. No, they're all useful. Yeah. Smile? Yeah. They just all work. A lot of clocking and getting stuff from the waiting room, I'll say. Yeah. Like a lot. Yeah, for sure. We have the Karen that's pay one clock one on placement to salvage a level one or lower from the waiting room and then scry. Um, and then we also have the pay one clock one on placement to salvage from the level a level one or lower from the waiting room and then mill two for two souls nana so we're clocking ourselves and getting from the waiting room quite a bit but not a whole lot of ways to put cards in the waiting room at level zero anyway so, yeah you have on death kotsky you have pay one there's only two of that check uh check four add, add add a card and uh yeah yeah we have baby karen yeah yeah baby karen uh i will say this uh this red runner yeah not bad maybe the best nice. red, maybe be one of the best red zeros i've ever read from review starlight i i think <laughs> it legitimately is the best red level zero in review starlight yeah i mean it's totally fine 3k yeah. runner is kind of hard to bring down yeah for sure yeah it just pluses. It just pluses. We love it. Yeah. I, I was like asking about a bunch of different deck choices. He's like, yeah, I mean, it, there's not really that many good red cards. And this no. card just pluses. And I'm no. like, you know yeah. what? He's right. You're I think spit. you're spitting. Um, and yeah. So. 
I like this level two backup too. Very unique profile. It's Leafa counter, where it's yeah. It's like salvage and salvage and ditch. Wait, what? Or is it Leafa? It's Leafa. I'm sorry, I can't read. Um, All right, awesome. Yeah. So yeah, never mind. It's Leafa, Leafa counter. Leafa's totally good because he's playing the two or less early play healer. Yes. That I am not playing. Yeah, uh, the one that needs the memory. Uh, it needs the memory. Effect. Yeah. And he's accepted that he's gonna play this drop salvage, and I've just never done that. I've just been like, I don't want to play this drop salvage for another second. <laughs> Isn't the drop salvage a Kauru code? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the drop salvage is a 500 power card. It's vanilla drop salvage. It can't side attack, and it sends the off finisher into memory. Right. On play. Right. Um. And it also, you can search for it and put it into memory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll get it into memory regardless. I mean, that's kind of sick. And the healer is good. Like on direct attack. Uh, stock from waiting room. It's good eventually. <laughs> I don't know if it's good immediately. And, I mean, it's an 11k all the time. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way this thing direct attacks for value unless the lane's already open. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's going to get yeah. killed <laughs> by whatever but, your like, opponent plays. What I have found, transitioning a bit to, to me scrubbing. Yeah. I've just never... Yeah, I've just never wanted to play that drop salvage and feel good about it no that card is that card is is hot dog water but uh um, and it enables a healer that on average i haven't really felt like i've wanted because it's already a two or less but then also uh in eight choice it's just getting rid of my off finishers one of my off finishers into memory which is kind of something i just don't want <laughs> I think I generally agree. I think that whole package could be dropped and just run, just run, just run more Hikari. Just run more Hikari if you want to heal. I, I like the Hikari profile just fine. There's no way that 3-2 produces stock. There ain't no way. It, Your it opponent's does, though. gonna reverse it. He plays it to get stock. I mean, he's got leaf a counter. So I have a one of of a counter yeah. and a two of of a healer. Yeah. And I'm going to have both of them. Yeah. And I'm also going to have the parts I need to finish the game. Yeah. Okay. It worked for him. Just have everything. I yeah. Why not? I would love to know how many times he played that healer. I would love to He know. plays it often enough. I guess. He does. Uh, So let's talk about my list real quick. Now that we've gone over all of the winners, all of the, the people that did well. Uh, I scrubbed out playing eight choice. And honestly, I never fought slime once. I never fought. There, there was like one board that somebody presented on the last game of the day where he played like three early play healers and I got, and I, I had my 3,500 stock kicker that says no backup on it. I was like, oh, guess I can't play an anti-early counter. My bad, I trolled. But also that was like the only time I would have even considered playing any of the two ones that I had in the deck. Yeah. And it was just not necessary. Like immediately afterwards, I was just gonna go to level three and play my thing anyway. And I was just like, yeah, I just have like three dead cards in my deck, like the whole day. <laughs> That's crazy because that also means you didn't face any Oshinoko. Yeah, true. Like somehow, and you didn't face any Anyas. No, no, there were Anyas, but like there's seven Ks and I don't care about them. There, were, there was like one Anya once. And at that point, I'd already sculpted like a level one hand again that was like good enough to kill that thing and then move on with my life. It's crazy that that, that card didn't provide any value. It may be, that's one of those things that, uh, yeah, where your locals might have hurt you. Where it's like, yeah. there's, there's, there's too many slimes in the locals. There's too many slimes in the, in the function. I can't, <laughs> I can't handle it. And then I'm just like, I'm a meta this shit. And Surely then, other people will be playing slime. No. Question marks. Eh. This cart titan was funny, but never practically useful. I fought one Ichika player, and what happened was he was sad and played one Ichika, and then he was still sad and only had another Ichika, the single Ichika for the second combo turn. And then I was like, you are at 2-5. I saw you trigger twice with five in waiting room. And so now what's going to happen here is that I'm going to pay one bouncer only each cause so that you can't do anything and kill you. Yeah. Kill you dead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, like, and that's partially why, like, after the event, I like proxy the three events and you can read about it on our blog because I, I wrote a blog post about it literally in the airport on the layover on the way home, which is kind of funny, uh, where I was just like, man, 
I really could have just been playing three cards that like really helped my game plan a lot, like consistently. Like I will play this card almost every time I see it and it will be good because this deck does not have that much deck speed and this card almost will always say mill enough cards to get me something good and or get me a way to mill the rest of the deck out and or get to like a better spot in general. Uh, and I'm just like, man, I could have just been playing this card. I think in general, um, those type of realizations are the result of tension in between two distinct parts of the game. One is ensuring that your deck runs as well as it can run and disrupting your opponent to the maximum amount that you can disrupt them. There will always be tension in the game around those two points because most of the time, in order to disrupt your opponent, you'll have to put some clunk in there that isn't ideal and under normal circumstances, assuming the game was normal you probably wouldn't play so i i don't dislike either choice but i think you'll you can feel good or bad about them outside of your control where if you'd faced three slimes in a row and then just bodied them with that two one you'd have been like well this card is fucking sick and even if you didn't win the game you'd feel like it derived value I think that meta choices, which are what those both those slots are, mm -hmm. though meta choices are one of those things that you have to try and not beat yourself up too much about, only because you can't know exactly what you're going to face, but you can know sort of what the environment looks like. But at the same time, like even into another slime player, I would still have a deck speed issue, right? Sure. And like the the deck itself, like like a marked weakness of the deck that like we'd already like kind of discussed and gone over was dex and i just like coped i just been like uh i don't know that there's really anything else i can do about this so i might as well play these tech cards and also um i mean the deck had been performing very well in well local, enough in local play but it but even so like it, it was still just like a really market weakness that just like i just like taken lying down just yeah. like you know what you just ignored it I'll just like I'll just die sometimes. Right. And at, and really, because maybe my finisher is strong enough to where I can win out of those type of game states. Yeah. But as it turns out, really, we can um, we can not die sometimes. Yeah. Which is I think also um, which is nice. Yeah, I think also it depends on how your advantage uh, presents itself. So in the case of this deck, um, you don't have a lot of raw drawing, but. Your combo also doesn't necessarily care about running that card because it's likely to pick good cards no matter what it does. Yeah. So um, if you have a combo that's like check four, check three, stuff like that, you can be punished for running dead events because you'll either mill them with the combo, can't pick them up with the combo, or if you have something like console, you can get punished for revealing the event and then seeing that it's there and not being able to move it. Um, and all the other things that make my spy deck bad. <laughs> but in the case of this deck and this particular event, I don't think there's any good way to, to punish it. So yeah, I think you it's can fine grab to, it off you can of, just run it. Yeah, you have you can grab it off the thing that you ditch with. You're on Nethagotsky, which I have three of in my deck. You And even better, uh, it helps with your end game too, to some degree, because... Sort of. um, it, it's got some funniness to it and that even like at locals just like the other day I walked in or I, I go into level three and my hand is like a two characters the event and two finishers and or it's specifically a giraffe a character and two finishers in the event and what I'm able to do is I'm just like okay let's just try this and I try to play the first finisher whiffs it then we play the giraffe to look the next top three, see if there's a climax in there. There isn't. The event checks three, replaces itself. Then the, the second finisher draws into an event. Yeah, yeah, it'll let you dig. Yeah, it'll let you dig. And the you, know, you can add it off of the finisher. Right. So like if you're in a super bad state, you but you check the event, further. yeah, right. you can dig even further. Right. And use the event to dig for more finishers, which then digs for more finishers or more climaxes or whatever. Right. Yeah. It's a... Uh, like it, it even feels better in more scenarios in this deck than like 
the deck that got top 16 where it's like a good event but it there's not as many inherent kind of uh synergy to it i guess yeah i um yeah i'm a fan of the i'm a fan of both finishers honestly one of the best things about review starlight it feels like is all of their top ends feel super good like they have a lot of top ends where it's just like man this thing will just kill you if you if you set it up right the maya claudine is a bit more technical in the sense that like it's harder to execute mechanically and um from a sculpt perspective you need more pieces and they're different pieces but the Kaurigo finisher is extremely straightforward to set up is self-setting it digs for other copies of itself and its climaxes and is extremely dangerous that's just it's just a lot of packets you probably can't triple it in most circumstances but even two of it plus almost anything else is really dangerous dude i love real stock swap can i just can i can I have a shout out for real stock swap can i get a shout out for vessel of the gods that reflects infinity my Nintendo? i fucking love real stock swap I, that that shit is hilarious i'm just sitting here like yeah you know that's a real small deck you got there buddy <laughs> I think uh, we're seeing a paradigm shift uh, in the game where we're getting a lot less of the real stock swaps and we're getting a lot more stock shuffling. But what I will yeah, say... Yeah, it's going to be for a little bit, for sure. Yeah, but what I will say is that one of the other things that's starting to come along, and I, you see it in newer JP sets, is cards that will stock shuffle you after performing some other mechanic. Mm -hmm. So the most recent stock shuffle that I read was like Mill oh and then stock shuffle interesting so it's like you can force your opponent into awkward deck states by refreshing them and then stock shuffling them yeah 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 so i kind of dig that i think that those those type of mechanics are really um needed and necessary to kind of push stock shuffle along because stock shuffle has really awful game states when your opponent's deck is low yeah it's like the inverse of the stock swap where it's like stock swap is at its peak whenever your opponent's deck is low stock shuffle is at its weakest point when your opponent's deck is low because obviously you're shuffling most of the stock into a tiny deck and then basically replacing it with the exact same cards yeah so it doesn't have as much value there whereas in a brand new deck then your opponent can get absolutely fuckered by that card so fumio stock shuffle is actually the preferred order of operations now where it's like yeah yeah for sure where it's like okay you put all the cards back okay now cram them all together and then choose random ones it's like the best chance you're gonna have it at defeating your opponent with that sort of decompression but i think it's probably better like i know we all love stock swap but like i, I think the game is probably healthier not not having as many stock swaps assuming that the stock shuffle is cheaper um when the stock shuffle costs more than yeah one, it might be healthier but I have a little toxic trait, turns out. <laughs> I mean, we all love we all love it whenever our opponent is just disrespecting to the highest level of magnitude. And you're like, guess what, fucker? No, it's but, even better when they can't do anything about it. Yeah, when it's they're like just the nature like, of their I deck. have to have like six or seven stock to do my finisher, and now I've milled my deck to like six or seven or eight or nine or ten cards, and there's definitely climaxes in that bitch. I'm just like, yeah cool turns out i run eight choice turns out if i've been behind that's that means i've been triggering choices and getting paid which means now you're gonna get stock swap finisher maybe double finisher great times all around yeah good stuff yeah i like the the pair i'm fine I like with the, it oh, I, yeah you, you, you go I, i'm fine with it like existentially at three yeah as long as it costs three stock and can't there's no other way for it to come down earlier right like i think we can all agree that stock swap at two is is pretty cancer and stock swap at zero is omega cancer but yeah imagine spending too many turns at one and then having like 10 stock and getting stock swapped just, yeah like just lose the whole game i played a game on simulator the other day where i got bunts for luck three times in the game i'm like i don't, <laughs> I don't know what i'm supposed to fucking do here like, i can't play the game <laughs> Oh man! Like I need Bang Dream to never come back to the meta because Holy like I, I I cannot explain to you like there doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter what your game state is that card will fuck you right up and so yeah but like it, it's fine if it's a three it's fine but you can play right yeah yeah for sure 
But yeah, you'll get them next yeah. time. You got a million other chances, you'll get them. Yeah, I think I'm a review player. I think it's uh, it's just where I am now. Yeah, I'm, and then I'm committed was, to the bit. Yeah, and then just I mean, I think the worst part about it was that it felt good enough even at the regional. It was just like, is there's like a world where it, like it just it just like won't function or something, or I'm just like yeah, if you're coping too hard, you know. Yeah, if I'm just coping too hard, like yeah, it's it's time to go, you know. Everyone knows that feeling, and they want to deny it, but they can't. Assuming like, but this was like just like close all day. Yeah, if you're looking at the game rationally, you there will always be times where you're like you're playing a deck because you really like the show or you really like the characters, you really like one specific interaction, like my horrible spy deck, where <laughs> you want it to work more than it can work. Right. And yeah. you keep coming into these game states where you're like, if only I dot 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 something different every single game, and then you're like. The realization just seems to be the deck's not good enough. It's not good enough. Or you build it wrong. Like, maybe your build is not good enough. Or maybe the set is just not good enough. If you iterate on something like five, six, seven, eight times and it's still not good, maybe it's just not good enough. And you can still play it. Like, you can still have fun, but you have to accept the limitations of the deck. Yeah. But if you feel like you're always in it and, like, it's really close and you're winning quite a bit, but sometimes it doesn't and there's, like, one specific thing that keeps happening then it's just like this camera thing where it's like okay we can look at this one thing and be like well oh. here's a band-aid i could put on it that might yeah. make it it might make things better yeah. and it looks like there's some cards here i don't like yeah so yeah and yeah i mean props to the people i lost to really have the mandate of heaven i had the mandate of heaven sometimes too i'm not gonna yeah i'm not gonna bs and say that i never had it like this guy double eat skis me and i just block everything the squires never reveal anything and then i'm just like ha and he sticks the one swing to send me to three to kill him instantly i was like great stuff good times uh oh the oh ah uh, okay so be before that part uh the losses uh very last loss uh it was like the fight for x2 it definitely wouldn't have mattered either way anyways but still you know you want to fight for it um like uh, i get like a font of life and he like barely blocks it after i trigger a soul i'm like rats <laughs> and um but it also there's like a double trigger to try to keep him at two four so that he has to ricky and he only gets like one marine but i'm just like i really just had to trigger choice on two swings of the two swing turn awesome good stuff uh my bad there's only four in there you know just really really excellent gameplay on my part uh, <laughs> but then oh what is it he's like round two i literally never block there are always climaxes in the deck they're at like an okay enough kind of like compression state never block a single point of damage i send him to three after he sends me to three and he's vanilla swings me three times into a six climax deck and i take four uh it's like a, it's no, it's like like three, three, four, just like straight to the face. I'm just like, yep, my bad. Yeah, I don't Can't know. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the Bochi player that he did, he like did one one combo, and then he's like double brainstorm, hit t four total climaxes, swing three times clean, triple block, go to the next deck, double brainstorm, hit a bunch of climaxes. Swing three clean, triple block, and then he's at two one, and I'm at three zero. And I'm like, try double finisher Futaba, and he goes from this is a fresh deck, two climaxes guaranteed out. He has like six stock, and like uh, five cards, six card hand, and there's only six climaxes in it guaranteed. He goes from two one to two four, and I'm just like, I don't know what to say or do. I he, he, he I can't he, hurt this guy. He's yeah. got me. He's yeah. got me. He he he's got me good. It's, I think one of the bad. most deceptive things about Bochi the Rock is they have a combo and a way to have a whole bunch of cards in their hand that they don't need. Yeah, true. And so, like, they can take their whole fistful of cards and fling them at you. Because they're like, they have Marine combo on the top end. Like, Yeah, yeah. They have all this excess hand, and they're just like, uh, this is like luxury, all the pillows that I'm sitting on here that I don't need, but by God, do they make me feel comfortable. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to this maniac Hendrickson player, the one Hendrickson that I fought that day in tournament, who triggered a pants early, super early game. I stuck kick him at one point, and we play through the whole game. He gets to his end turn. He pays all the way down, and then he's like, okay, there's only stock souls in the waiting room, by the way. He's like, okay, this should work. 
he plays the king, pays out the pants exactly where it was, and swaps to it. And I'm just like, yeah, he's got it. He's that guy. Yeah. I mean, that's those are the skills of the game. Like, Those are the skills. Like, if people want to know it. what makes you good at Weiss, that's one of the it's things. It's stuff like that. Stock tracking, baby. Remembering what's in your stock is a huge deal. It doesn't have to be the whole thing. Just yeah. like important shit. Important shit. There's important shit that makes your deck work. Where are your climaxes is like the lowest tier of that. Where it's like, you should at the very least know where all eight of those are. If you don't, you need to practice until you do. Because that skill is really important. Taking damage when you don't think you should or planning a turn around a block that does not exist is a real fast way to put the game in a death spiral and losing everything. Like, there are some mistakes that are very small in Y Schwartz that won't cost you very much. They'll cost you a card in hand or money or something like that, but you can recover. There are some mistakes that are so backbreaking that the whole game is lost. And I promise you, if you leave like four cards stranded in a deck because you think there's one climax in there and you eat a three or four, the game's over. Like, it's just, it's that type of thing where it, like, you can get punished so hard for not knowing. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah please. If you want to improve at this game, please. That's the very first thing. Like, I was even all eight of them are at all. Dude, points. I was even fucking up that skill like that tournament. I was I was going through it. It's hard like, to geez. do for an entire day. It's hard. Yeah. Like there is a physical requirement for the game, and the more you practice it, the better you'll get at it. Like That's you how gotta it is. you gotta get some of this stuff past the point where you're thinking about it and deeper into your brain, into where it's subconscious, and you can relieve the load of your brain during the tournament. Like, that's what the practice is for. You have to get those skills deep in there so that you don't think about them ever again. You just know. You don't have to worry about it. You're like, yeah, of course there are five here and three there. Because I just know. I didn't think about it. I just remembered. So, yeah. Those are, yeah. Yeah. But that was Sacramento. Shout outs to all the Cali gamers. We love we love all the Cali homies that we, do. we, we met and that we knew. Uh, the SoCal and the Nor NorCal players, you know, shout outs to you know, Steven, Kenny, Panda, David, whose like family bakery just makes insane mochi. Like Osaka Ya is sick. Nice. Like I bought some to go. Like I was sitting at home the other day just eating the orange mochi. Man, I was like, why didn't I know man, about that? That's crazy. Man, that's so good. I gotta go there next time. Yeah, dude. That 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 shit is sick. Yeah. I love that mochi. Uh, shout outs to, to John who got top 16 with the, the John Ruby list. Uh, shout outs to, to Isaac who has an invite. He's he's going. I'll see you soon. He'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Yeah. <laughs> shout outs to everybody yeah. that, that was there that said hello. Shout out to, to Bob Ross who asked me for Ayakashi deck advice right before the tournament. Fuck it. I, I hoped you did well enough. I don't know that. I, we specifically cut one of the cards that was in the second place Ayakashi list, so that wasn't you. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I hope you, you had fun and you did well enough. And, and everybody else that maybe I don't remember your name, but shout out to you, homies. It was a good time. It's a good time. Good to hang. Good to play Y Schwartz. We love playing Y Schwartz. And that's our show for today. So tune in next time after your next deck out. And don't you forget, take the refresh point.